top bar hive. This is the front entrance end of the hive. Mouse guards. These are the wall lugs. Floor lug. Same on the rear entrance. This is the inside of the this is the outside. Screws. These screws mount the wall. These screws mount the floor. Same right here. These screws mount the walls. These screws mount the floor. These are your leg screws as they are here and here. And then your entrance. Now these three screw bolts here or for your landing board. When you get your hive, this is what it's going to look like when you get your kit. This is all installed. When you put your hive in, this is the bottom board. The countersink holes must go down. Countersink holes down. It's your flat surface. This is just an old door. Glue. You're, I don't know. I'm going to be right up front with you. I got two friends that helped me do this. One of them says, you don't use very much glue. I had the other buddy over a few days later. He said, man, you use a lot of glue. So use as much as you think. I coat it that way. Coat the where it's going to meet on the end and the side. bottom board is going to fit right on this lug just like that. I go ahead and put the other end on just to keep it straight till I get it screwed on. I like to move it to the end of the table where I can get to it. You want to make sure you get this bottom board centered between the two lugs. So quarter inch star drive torque screws. I like using this. You can use a cordless drill. This is a little DeWalt 20 volt impact. Screw goes in here. I moved it. Make sure you're centered. Make sure your screw's straight. Run it in. Front on the bottom. This hive will take about probably 30 minutes to put together is all it's going to take. Turn it around. <coughs> repeat the process on the rear of the hive. This makes an incredibly strong joint. You can see on my web page where I have my son son-in-law and a good friend of mine standing on the hive. That was still when I was using pine. I don't know how much this hive using the hardwood will hold, but it will be considerably more. Again, be sure it's centered. Be sure your screw's straight and drive it home. screws. There's your end and your bottoms. Now is the time where you're going to want to stop and think where you want your hive. When you walk up to your hive, think where you're going to have it setting. When you walk up to your hive, think on which way side you want the entrance, which side you want the window, and how you want the roof to open. I have mine with the window on one side, the hinges for the roof on the other. I'm going to make this one a right hand entrance. So when I walk up to the hive, entrance is on the right, the window is going to be in the front. This is the window sideboard. Outside of the hive, this is the inside. 
be sure and get your cut out for the window on the inside. When you put the hive side on, you want the bottom to fit like this. You want the top flat. You do not want the top of the wall like this. You do not want that. This is the way you want the high side to be. Again, glue. This makes an incredibly strong joint. If you're going to be staining the hive, try not to get your glue on any surfaces that you're going to be staining. The glue doesn't really allow the stain to penetrate and you'll have a bald spot, I guess, for lack of a better word. You want the floor and the wall matching. I do not glue this. You can glue the bottom. I don't. It will be screwed. You want this tight here. You don't want it like that. You want the wall flush with the lugs and flat on the floor. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use my hand on the inside. And I'm going to push the wall over. And I'm going to use my armpit here a little bit. Push it down like that. And I'm going to come in on the bottom like that to push it down. There's that one. Same thing on the bottom. I do both bottoms at the same time before I do the uppers. Okay. Same thing with this end. I've got it screwed down. Start a couple more screws. It just makes it easier for me. Make sure the wall is pushed back to the outside of the lug. Here you don't want the wall separated. You want it against the lug like that. Come over here. I always start. Sometimes there's a little gap on the on the side right mm -hmm. here to be able to pull the wall in. Instead of pulling it all in at once, I start down and bring it in a shot at a time. Instead of do not get your finger in there because you won't be able to get it unscrewed fast enough. <clears throat> There's that wall. If I wasn't talking and having to explain everything, I would already have this hive body together. Uh, once you watch the video a couple of times, you will be able to go right through it. Again, I'm doing the same thing here, pulling the wall over. I have a PDF version on my web page. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. A video is worth a thousand pictures. Backside high body. Again, when you put the hive body on, put it on so the tolerance is so close, you got to get it in straight. Be sure the sides, the tops are flat. That way it fits flat against the bottom. The sides. I don't know if I'm using too much glue or not enough glue. I've been told both, as I told you a while ago. Again, be sure and don't use your gluey fingers to and touch the sides of the hive if you're going to stain them. It will make the stain where it doesn't go into the wood. Again, pull the hive body over to the wall, 
pushing down and in. sides and the bottom. I'm going to turn the high body upside down. I am going to get my inch and a quarter deck screws. Back to my screw gun. Push down on your high body to the side. Make sure it's lined up. Sometimes if you want to back it up second time it fits tighter. The reason I don't use the star drive on the bottom is I haven't been able to find any in the length that I need. So, if anybody knows where some are at, send me an email. Now we're going to put the bottom rails on for the sticky boards. Um, if you can see, when this lays in here like this, it makes a groove where the sticky boards will slide in like this to cover your bottom up. I always put the long board across the bottom always across the bottom but always on the front by the window makes it cleaner okay see how it's laying it lays like so I always line it up with the bottom it makes a cleaner better looking hive this thing's gonna look like a piece of furniture in your yard that way the sticky board is on the back side of the hive where it's sticking out it doesn't show like uh, makes it just more pleasing to the eye. In. Screws. And as I go down through here, I make sure that it is matches the front edge. You have four side rails. One will go here. One will go here two in the middle. There is going to be a little gap. I always put the front, the edge of this flush with the rear back here. And stick it down. Again, flush. As you can see, this isn't some cheap I've made out of particle board and plywood. And this is as good as I can make them. I do this, and I always put it in the center. You can just do it by eye. You can measure it. I just do it by eye. That way, start my screws. Get it started flush on the front edge.
there it is. That is your high box. These are your three screws for your landing board. There is a center screw hole. All I do is I'm going to run that screw out just a little bit. Like so. I do not glue this on. If something happens one of these days where it gets broke off, all you have to do is unscrew it and you can put a different landing board on if somebody tries to pick it up. It is not a handle. On tight. I pick it up. Eyeball it level. Your hive body is done. Now we'll put the window on. The way I do the window, shutter, hinge, and hardware. Be careful. There are little bitty screws. I gave you five. Wait if you drop one. Lay them up there like that. The window is 16 inches long. I measure in four inches. Put a line on the board and measure in four inches again at 12. Like so. Take your hinge. You can line the hole up over the line. If you're using something like this to put that tiny screw in, be careful. You'll strip it right out. So. So. So, now you want to make a tiny mark in the middle of this, which would be an 8 inch, just a little bitty mark. And then you're going to want to make a mark in the inner center of your window, which is 14 inches at 7. Just a tiny mark so you can see it like so. That's going to let you line your window shutter up with the hole. I'm just lining the two little marks up and you bring it up until your hinges line up with your bottom board. No measuring, no worrying about whether it's straight, square, because it is. Can you tell I put a lot of work in this hive? Mm -hmm. There's a thousands of hours. Mm -hmm. There's your shutter. Okay, now we got to latch it. In the hinge hardware, there's a two inch screw. It will go through this. Now I want to show you this. I started making these when I started cutting all the hives out by hand on my shop smith. I still do these. These are made out of hardwood, cut freehand by me. So I'm not changing that part on it. So when you see that, it's not computer cut like the rest of it is. Okay. A little bit of glue on the back side. I don't put very much. 
That way it doesn't squirt out because I'm going to be staining or painting. This one's actually going to be painted. But I'm making it for me. I put, I've got my, my little mark there. I put it right in the center about that far off of the top of the door. And then run it down. I run it down tighter than I would leave it normally. So the hinge, until the glue dries, I'll back the screw up a little bit. That way the hinge will move better. Boys and girls, there is your hive body. It is done. Put the screw back in my window hinge and that way I'll pack it. That is your hive body. Complete. Done. Not bad, huh? Not bad.